Okay, we're back with our final hour here that we're going to be with Ilana Friedland as we talk about Under an Ionized Sky from chemtrails to space fence lockdown. Let's talk about that again, Ilana, if you can. Explain space fence lockdown. As I said, um, it all started with the SDI program back under Reagan in the 80s, and then it was it, it, it went underground. It went black, I think. And they worked on the atmosphere to get it to be filled with ions uh, so that it would be electrically charged uh, from the get-go and therefore would be available 24-7 for wireless operations. At the same time this is all going on, lo and behold, we're, uh, we citizens are all given the computer and then we're given uh, the cell phones that no one now can live without. And, and so these wireless uh, apparatus were to be used in the space fence lockdown. But they, were, they looked benign. They looked convenient. They gave us entertainment. They were comforting, uh, very flashy and cool. Uh, but uh, really, if we look around at all of the towers, at the Internet of Things now coming online, all the, the gugas in people's houses that have computers in them. Their car has a multitude of computers in it. Everywhere we look, a, uh, a tower is going up for more wireless uh, 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 access, of greater speed, uh, greater content, uh, and faster flow, uh, blah, blah, blah. But really what's gone on is we've been surrounded by what we're now being plugged into. And the only thing different from all of these civilian uh, conveniences is that they're covertly what, it, what the military calls dual use. Uh, they're military and they're civilian. So all this stuff is military and civilian. Now, above the Earth, where our sounding rockets go, they go zooming up uh, into the stratosphere, and they always have some story about they're going to be testing something, or they're Elon Musk type of pri uh, type private enterprise, they're putting a satellite up there or whatever. Uh, this is part of it. And uh, those metals that are spewed out the back of those rockets are virtually identical to the metals being spewed out of the backs of jets from the, um, the combustion chamber. So, so we have all these metals going up into the stratosphere. Many of them um, get caught up in the centrifugal force of the Earth and eventually sort of settle around the, uh, the equator in a ring. And this is the, the illustration I have on the cover of the book. There's a ring of metals. This is all nano nanoscale metals, okay. billions and trillions of them, and they're all uh, making a ring very similar to that of Saturn, uh, if if you really look at it. Uh, and um, between that ring and the uh, ground infrastructure that we now have, besides the towers, we've got radar installations, we've got NEXRADs, We've got um, even even our wind farms are part of this. Uh, even our fracking uh, is part of this. And certainly all along, we now have scalar technology, which actually goes through the earth. Uh, so everything is electrified. Everything is wireless. And we have breathed in the same metals that are around the planet and in our atmosphere, and they're now in our bodies. Are you getting the picture? Not a good picture, is it? No, we're plugged in. Next up, let's go to the phones. Uh, we'll pick it up by going to Stephen in Royal Oak, Michigan, east of the Rockies. Hi, Stephen, go ahead. Hi, George. How's my reception? Not bad. Okay. Uh, first of all, guess what, folks? I'm on an Obama phone, okay? So take that as it, as it, as it may. And, George... Uh, I would like to nominate you as a Time Life Man of the Year or the Century. Oh, okay. you don't have to do that, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, seriously, you, I mean, you put out the truth that all us Cleavisites need, okay? And 
Uh, uh, your your guest name is Freeland, is that correct? Ilana. Ilana, okay, Ilana. And you're another uh, truth in the darkness of ignorance that all the government entities want us to believe. Yes, yes, thank yeah. you. Here, here's my question. I got 30 days, George. I've been fighting this meter. I've had the same meter for 48 years. That old girl keeps pumping out, no problem. I got a letter two days ago. If I don't uh, uh, condescend to them, they're going to come onto my property. You know, uh, they got the uh, uh, law of access because that's their meter. They're going to cut my juice. And guess what they did in the letter? They're offering me 50 bucks now to come onto my property. How can I stop these folks? Jeez. <laughs> He's going to lose his electricity. What's he doing? Well, um, some people are are putting um, covers over the smart meters. There are smart meter citizen groups. They're all across the Internet now. Uh, this is a surveillance uh, move by the state, and it has to do with the space fence lockdown. It's, again, another way to plug us in and keep track of uh, how we're using our energy and not using it. I read where a woman had died because of the high heat because they shut her electricity off. That could be. It's criminal. I mean, yes, they are going to. Every state is on their own with the smart meters, and I tend to think that the 5G is going to supplement them uh, and fill in those gaps where the smart meters have not been successful. Now, some people who have the ability to pay their electric bill are probably saying, you know, why should I worry about that? If somebody can't pay, shut their power off. But we need to help people who can't afford it. Absolutely. I mean, we, we just have to help them. I mean, that's what we're here for. Well, it's a utility, right? I mean, it's supposed to serve the citizens. It's not supposed to be a military contractor. Set up a payment plan, low, low budget or something. Yeah. Let's go to uh, Anthony in the Mojave Desert out there in California. Anthony, take it away. Hi there. How you doing? Okay. Thank you, sir. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say about the Morgans disease, and um, we're out here by Edwards Air, Air Force Base. Yeah. I call like the new area, if you want. Um, yeah. Well, we're bombarded all the time with them. Something. Oh, yeah. oh absolutely. And. Um, my wife uh, contracted more gallons disease. Yes, because you are right under those rocket launches. I mean, they're they're happening hot and heavy from Edwards and uh, on the East Coast from Wallops. I'm really sorry that you're there, and you, you, your chemtrails must be amazing because they will lay lots of trails wherever they need communication. Yeah. Sure. Who diagnosed it, uh, Anthony? Who diagnosed the uh, more well, gallons? Of she so diagnosed, and she was pulling out the fibers at first. And then it seemed to transform into something else. She kept scratching her skin and going, Anthony, is this a, a bug clot? I look at it, it looked like a bug clot. Yeah. She did this dozens of times. And then she goes, is this a bug clot? And she goes on a white paper card. I haven't had my visor, my optical visor on to magnify it. And I took the thing. And it recoils. And I heat the poker. And it violently recoils and dies. Yeah, it looks like a little, it's almost like something out of an alien. So they're alive. Oh, they are alive. Yeah, yeah. yeah now, what do, you, I, what do you do about that? Okay, well, I, What's I he recommend do? That, um, that if you haven't checked him out, that you do check him out. There is one Canadian who is doing, he's a, an engineer, electrical engineer, and he's doing a lot of things to deal with his own Morgellons, and he's sharing everything on the Internet. His name is Tony Pantaloresco. And Pantaloresco, I couldn't even say it on a few the first few radio shows. It's P A N T A L L E R E S C O. And Tony is coming up with some amazing ways to get the nanos out of the system. And it has to do with setting up a magnetic field. Jeez, how long has he been doing this? Uh, he's uh, been doing it maybe for five years. No, there's not a lot of people doing this. No, He's not, out there not by himself. Tony, it's not gusto like uh, Tony is. Next up, we go to uh, Brandon in Denver, Colorado. Happens to be a first-time caller for us. Hello, Brandon. Hi, George. Thanks. I'm a big fan of you guys. Thank really you, sir. Happy to get on with you. Oh, glad I really you. enjoy the show, and I'm a host insider. I just got to say. Oh, oh, great. Yeah. Hope you like. But, it. Hi, Alana. How you doing tonight? Hello. Hello. Hi. 
So I wanted to touch base on a couple of things um, just really quick. My dad actually worked for a cell site company here in Colorado, and, um, you know, he mentioned to me long, he's been there for about 20 years, and he said that, um, you know, that the government has cell sites of their own as well, you know, and, you know, he had a map one time where he said he looked at it, and he had, you know, all his sites put out on this map where all there's all there's a place. But along with that, there was just as many that were made by the government. It kind of shocked him. He was in awe of the fact of that. Mm -hmm. But um, also, uh, I wanted to uh, ask you if you could go a little bit more in depth about, uh, well, you know, with the chemtrails and all, I was curious, there has to be some kind of risk for these, you know, elitists or these globalists. I mean, I it just kind of puts me in, I, amazes me that they would put themselves just in, you know, breathing the same air and, eating the same food as us, so, uh, you know, it's just something I'm really curious about. I'd like to learn a bit more, because we're all kind of, you know, here on this planet together. I don't know why they would want to... You know, right, right. Well, themselves. first of all, they don't eat the same food we eat. Uh, they have, um, you know, they have their own farms, and they're farming their food with state-of-the-art uh, nutrients and soil. They do not have aluminum in their soil. Uh, they're probably doing it under in, in covered what's called covered farming. It may even be underground under grow lights. Uh, I would imagine that was true. And then again, as I said before, they have uh, state of the art uh, air and water filters. Uh, they're building underground. And um, and truthfully, uh, I've studied the elite for about 20 years. They, they do not raise their children the same way. Uh, their children do not watch television. Their children do not have cell phones, etc. So um, they are, um, their way of living is uh, due to, for the real insiders, the big ones, uh, the real insiders are dedicated to this futuristic uh, inner brotherhood way of looking at planet Earth where they will be as gods here and uh, kick out the, uh, the uh, competitive gods that ha are actual, uh, actually divine, uh, and, um, and they want a different humanity. So uh, they're willing to sacrifice their own children. There's no problem with that. Uh, but for themselves, uh, I don't know if you read the article recently, just to give you an idea of how far they'll go, that now uh, they're going to... Um, the medical industry is going to provide b the blood of small children for uh, sale. Yes. Why? Because uh, the blood of small children is a tremendous nutrient and vitality, immediate infusion. Uh, and then you can imagine that they have uh, various vaccinations they can take. I mean, they live so differently from how we live. Uh, I, it's no wonder that uh, David Icke talks about different species. And I mean, it's no wonder. Do some people sometimes accuse you of just being out there too far? <laughs> well, I'm on your show. What do you... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, of course, uh, but I have to consider a lot of things uh, and from the evidence. I mean, I'm very evidence-bound. I don't leap to conclusions. I kind of follow uh, the trail and see where the breadcrumbs lead. And even if they lead to outrageous places, I have to consider it. Absolutely. Okay, next up, let's go to Sue in Rock Hill, South Carolina, east of the Rockies. Hi, Sue. Go ahead. Hello. I'm... Um I'm so happy to reach you. I'm glad you got uh, through. Go ahead. I have more gallons. It's about two and a half years. I'm just so frustrated. The last doctor I went to, I've had other doctors just laugh at me or make fun of me. People are not a hatchery. What do you think? Something leads an egg, so they'll say terrible things, especially if you're a senior. Yeah. And the last doctor started to come close and saw these things coming out through the skin and backed up and wouldn't even come close to me yeah. and and ordered an antidepressant oh my gosh um, and he told he lied to me he told me it was for the spasms and 
it made me so sick, and when I found out what it was, I stopped it right away, but it made me awful sick. I mean, I, I can't find a doctor to trust. No, no, I, I don't think there is a doctor. Um, I, I don't know of any. Some are coming around. We have a doctor up here in the Northwest. His name is Dr. Dietrich Klinghart. He's a, a German doctor. He has a practice in Seattle, and he has a practice in, uh, in Berlin. He is uh, definitely looking at Lyme, and uh, he has uh, definitely said to me that he would like to meet with me in order to understand Morgellons better. But this is moving at a snail's pace. And so that's why people on the Internet, uh, you know, and of course the Internet is filled with radiation, right, and, uh, and uh, definite, uh, definitely have reactions to that if you have Morgellons. Uh, but people are looking at ways to heal themselves. And one thing that comes to mind that gives great relief, and I'll tell you, is to take a bath in uh, Epsom salt, sea salt, and uh, borax, uh, just the kind that you use for laundry detergent. Uh, these three ingredients uh, give great relief, and many of the nano nanos inside of your body will abandon ship as soon as you get in that bath. Uh, some people are taking the bath every day. Uh, I only take it once every week or so just to see how I'm doing. Uh, but um, again, I bring that name up. P Tony Pantaloresco has many good, good ideas uh, of getting uh, these nanobots, uh, they're really nanobots, out of your body. I'm so sorry you're suffering. And the CDC said back in 2012, Morgellons may not be real. Have they changed their tune yet? Yes, they have. They've changed their tune, but that's about all that's happened. Now they, now they will say it's an affliction. Yes. Well, it's about time. But they don't recommend anything to do to, to fight it or cure it. No. Did you know the CDC is a private corporation? I never knew that. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was a conglomerate of our government. No, it's not government agency. It's a private. Probably owned by Big Pharma. Probably. You never know. Yeah. Uh, we're going to take a break pretty soon, Elana, but uh, give out your websites and your Facebook. Yes. Uh, for those who want to follow the geoengineering thread, which leads to Morgellons, uh, leads to targeting of individuals, leads uh, in so many places, I can, I can hardly believe that it's all connected, but it is. Uh, try to uh, ask to be a member of my closed site. It's called Ilana Freeland uh, uh, Under an Ionized Sky. And then I have a site, which uh, I never have time to go to. I apologize. But everything is there. The books are there. Uh, who I am is there. And an email address that's separate from my normal email. And that is uh, ilanafreeland.com, okay. and that's uh, lowercase. And we've got that link for you at coasttocoastam.com. Back with more in a moment on Coast to Coast.